Hello guys and welcome to another Profile Tree video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the best web development books. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So the starting out Python covers the fundamental concepts of Python programming and it pretty much gradually builds up from the basics to the more advanced topics. Now, the book is actually structured to guide readers through the practical examples and exercises, and this allows them to gain a hands-on experience and reinforce their understanding of Python's syntax and features. Now, looking at the book itself, there are a couple of editions available. I do have the fourth edition myself. Now, uh, at the start, you will get a chapter one to introduction to computers and programming, and that's just providing you with the development environment and how to write your first program. Now that should be at around uh, page 23. Yep, so it's just uh, an introduction, uh, hardware and software, how computers store data and how a program works using Python. And then the chapter two would mainly talk about the input processing and output. So that's when you get into the data types as well and variables. So that's when readers will learn about Python's data types, such as numbers, strings, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. So uh, there's a couple of stuffs to learn from there. And that would be at the page 53. So it talks a little bit more in depth from there. So a couple of inputs and in, yep. So then the next one would be your chapter three, and that is the decision structures and Boolean logic. And that part of the chapter will cover uh, control structures like conditional statements, and that's like if, else, or loops, or for and while, and how to make decisions in Python programs. So a couple of options there as well. And then you get your repetition structures as well. You got your functions, uh, files, and exceptions. So functions is where you could uh, just improve your code readability as well. And then for the files and exceptions, so that's like file input and output. So that'll just explain how to work with files. So like reading data from files and then writing data to files. And then you'll get the option as well to read more on the classes and object oriented programming. And that's your first introduction then to OOP and Python. And that is explaining classes, objects, and inheritance. So what you can see from screen now is more or less what it would look like. So there I am building an actual class. And then uh, from there, I'm, I'm going through it. So this is like a kilo conversion and stuff. So you're able to create a couple of different types, whether it be like a web application or if you're creating something simple like a calculator as well or stock things like that, there's a lot you can learn from uh, for creating OOP. And you can actually create like a, an, an interface as well. So that more talks about the GUI. So that's a uh, graphic graphical user interfaces and event driven, uh, driven programming. And that, as I said, is an introduction to building a simple GUI application using the Python's libraries. And you'll also go through like data structures and algorithms. And that's basically an overview of basic data structures and algorithm, algorithms using Python. Then you'll also have to go through the additional topics. So uh, from this one here, uh, for what I have currently on my hand right now, which is the fourth edition, uh, you'll have additional topics like predefined named colors, uh, more about the import statement. You've got uh, PIP utility, so that's installing modules with PIP utility or PIP utility. Uh, you get to learn about inheritance, recursion as well, and how to install Python. So that's another important asset as well. So quite a few things to learn in terms of starting out with Python, uh, which is the fourth edition by Tony Gaddis. And this is actually a Pearson book. So would highly recommend it. Um, now it serves well as an excellent foundation for any beginners who want to maybe dive into Python programming 
and as I said maybe it's your first time and as well as that even if you are an expert at uh, Python anyway you can build a solid understanding of the language itself so it's a great introduction so as with any programming book as well it's essential to practice regularly and work through the exercises just to reinforce what you learn and become proficient in Python programming so quite a lot to learn and would highly recommend to actually buy the book and read it now I think it's usually around 50 pound if you were to get the uh, fourth edition or any other edition that is currently now available and as, a, as I said there's a list of different things that you can learn from it and there are a couple of different complex uh, topics that are included with the book itself so again would highly recommend to take a look at it. So our next book here is The Django for Beginners and it is by William S. Vincent. Now this is a highly regarded book and it serves an excellent resource for any individuals who want to learn about web development with the Django. Now the Django is actually based off a Python web framework and the book is designed with beginners in mind of course and it provides a step-by-step -step approach to building web applications using the Django. Now uh, we can go through the contents here. So we've got an introduction as to why. So why use the Django? Now it explains pretty much the benefits, features and how it simplifies web development in Python. So we've got a couple of options there. Now we've also got an area here for the setting up a development environment. So we'll actually scroll up now. So virtual environment. So this is where readers can pretty much learn how to install the Django and set up a development environment and create a new Django project. Now creating views and templates as well. So we can have a view on it as well. So let's see creating views. So there is a creating views and templates. So that basically means that the book covers the basics of the Django views and how to also use templates to render dynamic content. So we do have a couple of options there where we got the initial setup, creating up uh, views and URL configs, uh, hello world. So hello world is definitely the beginner uh, stage. Got our initial setup. So that uh, is what I was uh, setting up uh, or telling you guys earlier on, which is setting up the development environment. Now we also have the admin interface. So an admin interface is meaning that, you know, you'll be able to create an ad admin interface automatically using the built-in admin functionality. So there will be an actual topic on it. As you can see, there's the admin, so it's a blog up. And then of course we've got URLs or URL routing. So we've got one for each one. So you can see that there's one for the actual pages app. You've got one for the blog app, uh, user accounts. Uh, so it basically goes through a rundown on the different options that you have. Now you can work with forms as well. So it teaches you how to create and process forms in the Django, including form validation. You've got user authentication, you've got deployment, testing, and a web application step-by-step uh, -step process. So this is pretty much the different top chapters you can go through as I've shown you guys. So you've got the installation. So there's the Python 3 on Windows. So that's the command line that you use. Now that all requires the uh, actual download of Python. So you will have to uh, download it yourself. So let's see. So what we should be able to see, but of course, once we do have the actual program downloaded, then we'll be able to see the actual version. So it could be like 3.7.0, so as stated here. And of course, if it does work, then that's you uh, installed. Now, it gives you an initial process as well on the command line or the terminal for uh, the Linux. And we also have uh, Mac OS, as you guys can see. So that's the installation for that one. And then if we scroll down, we could see just uh, bits and pieces on layout, what, what you would use for command line. So it's all based off command line anyway. Of course, you've got your IP address and stuff. Uh, 
Git is also a very uh, important important uh, part for the Django as well, and there are several links in order to do so. So what's great about this book is the fact that it's actually available online, and it's actually available at zlib.pub. So it's a free download. There's other books by William S. Vincent as well, uh, like The Django for Professionals, if you want to maybe take a look at that. And of course, there's a couple of different ones as well. So here's one for build websites with Python and the Django. Uh, build websites with, okay, so that's 2.1. And this is the an older version as well. Visa even got one for the Django for APIs. So there's quite a couple of different versions in terms of the Python framework, uh, the Django. So have a read at it. Uh, take a look at the site. I'll actually link it on screen now and be sure to follow that uh, URL and take a read at the author's uh, books. So our next one here is HTML and CSS. And this is Design and Build Websites by John Duckett. Now, this is a beginner friendly book and it introduces HTML and CSS to any of the beginners as well. And it focuses on the visual design and responsive web development. Now, there's a lot to go through with this book. Um, this is a highly acclaimed and visually engaging resource. And of course, as I said, this is an introduction for anyone to use HTML and CSS. Uh, now, it's known for the web development concepts and the appeal of creating websites as well. Now we'll go through the introduction. So luckily there's this source here. I'll go ahead and put it up on screen now on the actual URL. So as I said, author is John Duckett and we have pretty much the contents here. So you've got your introduction and it's just basically explaining how HTML and CSS works together to create web pages. And next one here is text. So this is more or less the uh, fundamentals of the uh, HTML fundamentals as well as the CSS fundamentals. Now, um, what is HTML? That's pretty much hypertext markup language. and CSS as well is called cascading style sheets. Now we'll go ahead and flick through the pages here and we'll learn a little bit about it. So there's the introduction and there's references, background diagram. So a couple of examples there. So uh, this is pretty much just going into detail about what HTML is. So it just tells you what you will be going through. So there's HTML, you've got CSS, so presentation layout. And of course you get the practical, which is HTML5. So we'll go ahead and click next and more introduction on it as well. And then we'll come through here and then we'll actually try to get to the structure here. So here you could see that the book itself is well designed and laid out. Uh, it's very easy to read as well. So gives you an in-depth uh, look, as you can see, for the tags. So this is a paragraph tag. Uh, now, it explains about the character that's in the middle, uh, what the left angle bracket's all about, what the right angle bracket is all about. So it's less than and more than. And then you, it goes into detail what the opening tag is and what a closing tag is. So that's opening and that's closing tag. And let's have a look a little bit more. So then now it's uh, talking to us a bit, a bit about the attributes. So with this one, you can see that the attribute value in this one is English US and then this one's French, of course. So that would be particularly useful for any uh, websites that's planning to go e-commerce or um, if you're wanting to create a website that's worldwide, then it would be handy to have a translation for your website. But of course, we don't need to go into detail with that. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a couple of stuff about structure. Then you get a little bit of insight on what the body, head and title is all about as well. And then creating an actual web page. 
So it even explains that you can actually use the free editor called Notepad++. So that is where you can begin and start off with. But there are more complex uh, applications out there like Visual Code or Visual Studio Code. And then of course now it talks about text as well. So this is a, a section where it mainly explains about the typography and the web fonts. So it's just going into detail with how different font styles and web fonts are used to enhance the design of web pages. So we've got a semantic markup, uh, structural markup. So you can see that it uses different heading sizes. So H1 being the biggest, H6 being the smallest. You can see that itself. So there's six levels of it and that will occur as well for, uh, you can see for paragraphs as well. And then we've got an area for, uh, to make it bold and then italics as well. So a little bit more information on that. So you can have a break as well. Uh, HR, horizontal, horizontal rules. You got white spacing as well. And then talks about a uh, block quote. And then you've got emphasis as well and strong. So quite a good book. I would highly recommend to look at it. Now I can keep flicking through this and you'll be able to see for yourself anyway. Uh, but yes, uh, from what I know as well with, with this book, it goes into detail about transitions, animations, box model and layouts, and that's all for CSS. And it also gives you an introduction to Flexbox and Grid. And what that is, is the basic uses of, or the modern uses of CSS techniques just to build a responsive and flexible website design. Uh, but overall, uh, that's the book there. And it is free online, as I've shown on screen. Now, as I said, it's particularly suited for any beginners with little or no prior experience in web development at all. Now, the book's visual approach with code examples, screenshots, and illustration, illustrations makes it easier for readers to understand and apply the concepts taught. Now, uh, as I said, uh, it does talk about the HTML5 as well and CSS3. So do have a read for uh, this particular book. I would highly recommend it. So there you have it guys. That would be the books that I would recommend for web development. Now that's only the tip of the iceberg. Of course, there's plenty more books to read from, uh, especially if you're gonna look for JavaScript. There's plenty of authors out there like JavaScript The Good Parts, and that's by Douglas Crockford. And then if you want to learn more about PHP as well, there's one by Robin Nixon and that's learning PHP, MySQL and JavaScript, which would be very handy to have if you are trying to learn the backend code. And of course, there's plenty more about Python as well, which is like a crash course. And I'm sure there will be plenty of different sources out there in the net that are for free, thankfully. But guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video. And if you find it helpful, please do let us know in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. But other than that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you very much for watching.